Hello, I'm Father Fuenke Jean uh, at St. Pedro's Catholic Church in the Upper Keys. Today is April 19th, the Feast of the Divine Mercy. On this second Sunday of Easter, the church celebrates the Feast of the Divine Mercy. It is also called Divine Mercy Sunday. Sister Faustina, a Polish nun, was privileged to receive the revelations of the Divine Mercy, and she shares those revelations with us in her diary. And in 2000, St. Paul, John Paul II instituted the Feast of the Divine Mercy in our church, and it was celebrated the first time in the second Sunday of Easter in the year 2001. Well, in the Bible, in the scriptures, you know, God's mercy means his pity, his compassion, his kindness towards people. And as Christians, we are agents of mercy. We have to show mercy to others. As a matter of fact, in the sixth chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, Jesus said, be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful. We are to show the mercy of God to others. They can only experience it through us. In the 18th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, we find a very powerful parable, the parable of the unmerciful servant. It was a man who owed his master a huge amount of money. And since he was not able to pay it back, he begged his master to cancel the debt, and he did. However, when he went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him 100 silver coins, meaning a very small amount of money. He grabbed him, and he began to choke him. And the other servants witnessed the whole thing. Outraged by what they witnessed, they went to their master and reported the whole incident. And the master called the servant back. And he said to him, quote, you wicked servant. You know, I forgave you your debt. I canceled out your debt. Should it have you done the same thing for your fellow servant? God expects us to be merciful. We have to show his mercy to the whole world. In 2016, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, wrote a beautiful book called The Name of God is Mercy. And the Pope reflects on the mercy of God. And he said we cannot take mercy out of the equation as Christians. If we do, then we will not be Christian. Mercy must be there. Well, so often, you know, we, we might find a lot of reasons not to be merciful to other people. You know, and we, we have to be careful because, you know, uh, the reasons might be, well, he deserve it. You know, he deserve what he got. I'm not going to show any mercy to him or to her. Well, remember who we are. We, have, we are the salt of the earth, Jesus said in the Gospel of St. Matthew. We cannot lose our taste. We have to be able to show the mercy of God to the whole world. If there is any time that we are in need of mercy, it is now. As we are going through this pandemic, you know, the coronavirus, even it is upside down. The very things that we used to take for granted, like gathering in the church, like celebrating baptism, weddings, you know, like shaking hands, like hugging each other, those things are gone. We don't even know when, you know, we will see them back again in our lives. Therefore, it is a time in which we have to ask Jesus to have mercy on us. Well, one of the most beautiful stories of mercy, we find it in the 10th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel. The story of the good Samaritan. There are four people involved in that story. Two people were defined by their professions. We find the priest and the Levite. 
but there are two nameless individuals. The man who was found half dead on the ground, and also the traveler. We call him the Good Samaritan. Perhaps they didn't have a profession, you know, and especially the traveler. Well, the first two, you know, felt sorry for the man on the ground. Perhaps they said, look at him, I feel my heart, you know, feel sorry for him. But what did they do? The priest and the device, they didn't show mercy to that man. But the traveler was defined as a good Samaritan. Perhaps he didn't have a profession. Have he had a profession? The gospel would probably have said, then came the lawyer. Then came the doctor. That was not. This is not what the gospel said. He said, then came that traveler. He didn't have wealth. He was not a wealthy man either. Because remember what he did. He brought that man to the hospital, and he said he came the next morning with two coins and gave it to the hospital order and said, well, you know, take care of him. You know, if you spend more money, I will pay you back meaning that he didn't have much. All that good Samaritan had that day was a big heart. No big money, nothing at all. But because he had a good heart, he was able to take care of that man who was found half dead on the ground. You see, mercy is not judging others. Sometimes, you know, we do that. You know, we think that they deserve what they get. As Christians, we are not in the business of judging other people as we are in the business of loving them. St. Paul said, we owe only one thing and one thing only to others, which is to love them with all of our hearts. So on this, as we are going through this pandemic, to those dark days in our lives, we ask God, we ask Jesus to have mercy on us. Well, St. Francis reminds us that the bank of mercy, God's banks of mercy can never go bankrupt. In other words, it is renewed every morning, like the psalm said, that the psalmist said. So in other words, we need to turn to God and to Jesus to have them, to have mercy on us. If we do, then we will be in a better shape than we are now. Remember, Lord, your mercy. Have mercy on us and grant to us the peace that we need in our lives. Happy Divine Mercy Sunday to all of you.